Good evening. Uh, I'd like to call this bo board business meeting um, to order. Please rise for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tacoma Public Schools acknowledges that we are on the traditional, ancestral, and historic lands of the Puyallup Tribe of Indians. We honor with gratitude the land itself and the Puyallup Tribe. This acknowledgement serves as a first step in honoring our nearest tribal neighbors and partners who have inhabited this region since time immemorial, and to whom we give thanks for allowing us passage to their land. We shall intentionally create inclusive and respectful, respectful partnerships that honor indigenous cultures, histories, identities, and socio-political realities. General Counsel, will you please call a roll? Yes. President Keating? Here. Vice President Schroeser? Here. Director Bombright? Here. Director Leon? Here. <laughs> we have a quorum. Excellent. Um, is item number five, adoption of the agenda? I move the agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any comments or questions? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Um, all right, moving on to item number six, recognition of staff, students, and community. 6.1, uh, state holidays and civic observances. Yes, we have five state holidays or civic observances in the month of February. <clears throat> in alphabetical order, these are Black History Month. Uh, Black History Month was celebrated in Washington to honor the contributions and achievements of African Americans throughout history and to promote awareness and understanding of the pivotal role African Americans have played in shaping our state and our nation. Uh, 6.1b is civil rights education. February is also the month that many, school uh, many schools in our district conduct their civil rights education programming. Under state law, school districts across Washington are encouraged to prepare and conduct a civil rights education program at least once a year to commemorate the history of civil rights in our nation. Uh, February 19th is Civil Liberties Day of Remembrance. Uh, Civil Liberties Day of Remembrance commemorates the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II and is an opportunity for Washington students to learn and reflect on the importance of civil liberties in our state and our nation. Now we have a bit of a typo. Um, well, I see it's not there. Okay, so this is out of order a little bit. Okay, so let's talk about Kip Takuda Memorial. Uh, so Kip Takuda Memorial Education Program was established by the Washington State Legislature to promote the education, to promote education regarding the history and lessons of the exclusion, removal, and detention of persons of Japanese ancestry during World War II. The program was inspired by the late Kip Takuda, who was a member of the Washington State House of Representatives from 1995 to 2003 and was also a champion for civil rights and justice in Washington State. Now on 6.1E, uh, the third Monday of February is February 19th, and this is a state holiday. So, um, so for students and for families listening, uh, on Monday, February 19th, our sc uh, schools are closed and offices are closed. So on President's Day, uh, we celebrate the birthdays and legacies of US presidents, particularly George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. It highlights these presidents' contributions to the country's foundation and development. So just remember that third Monday of February, February 19th, no school. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on to item seven, superintendent's point, uh, report, 7.1, Head Start Policy Council. Yeah, so tonight we have one of our favorite conversations, our Head Start Policy Council update. And tonight we have Molly McGirth, who's our TPS Head Start Community Specialist with us. Thank you so much, Molly. And uh, yeah, are you, I don't know, do, do we need this Kat? slide? I will. Do we need the slide deck? We, uh, you can are we start okay us going and we'll, we'll get the slide deck going All right. for you too. All right. Thank well, you so much for being yes. Here. Good evening. Thank you for having us. We always enjoy being able to uh, uh, share a little bit about what's happening in our program. Michelle Raw Lewis couldn't be here this evening, but uh, Kathy's here. She's uh, our WASA rep, which is the Washington State Association of Head Start and ECAP, and she's part of our policy council. So she gets to be involved in all of the different policy decision-making things. 
Any other? Okay. You ready? Okay. We'll do this. All right. So good evening, everybody. My name is Kathy Eaton. Um, my little goes to Edna Travis Head Start. Um, I learned about policy council at our first parent meeting. I was always interested in being involved in my children's life even before they started school. Mm -hmm. I want to be that parent. Um, so when the opportunity presented itself, I jumped on it and there I was on the policy council. I attended the first meeting and was interested in becoming the Wausau rep. Um, I raised my hand and I got voted in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Double teaching. Right. <laughs> so, and listening to what Michelle was telling us, I was very interested in all the things that are going on right now. Um, I was, I, oh, I'm past that, sorry. I've really enjoyed being on the executive board and making my voice heard. Um, I'm gaining confidence, confidence and life skills for me and my children and for our future. I really appreciate the opportunity. There has been so many positive things that have came out of my son being in Head Start. My son has become more independent and so much more confident within himself. In these few months, I have watched his growth and loved every moment of it. His drawing, his writing, and his speech has greatly improved. He is having a rough time with his speech, so his teacher and I are putting curriculum together in place to move to improve it even more. My son is also learning wonderful social and life skills for him easily to advance to kindergarten. Without Head Start, my son wouldn't be the confident little guy he is today. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, would, would you oh. mind answering just in, they, uh, the sure, board of directors sure. may have a few questions. Sure. If not, I'll answer any questions you have. I'll open it up. Does anybody have any comments or questions? Well, I, I'd just like to ask, you know, you were halfway through the year. Yeah. And you've expressed some um, some descriptors of how your son has grown um, since the beginning of the year and, and how proud you are of him. And I want to just say thank you and how proud I am of you thank because you. Um, you're modeling really well for your kids. And yes. the policy council only works when the parents show up and are engaged. And um, it really is a transformative process for everyone involved. And um, it it's is. important for the school district because we are evaluated by the federal government. Um, the, the policy council and the workings of the policy council, the fact that you are so engaged and it's working so smoothly, we want to thank you because that thank makes you. us, uh, makes passing the federal process a lot easier. I got too. it. I got you. You are <laughs> awesome. <laughs> thank well, you. Anyway, but is there anything else maybe from um, someone, you know, else, other, other persons has spoken to you about this? I know you're a leader, so you've talked to the other parents. Are, are there other issues or things that you think... Uh, Head Start has done for children in, in, the, in the program? Um, I haven't really heard anything that, unfortunately, the parents that I meet are kind of like in and out, yep. you know. Um, I try Pick and talk problem. to as many as possible. Um, they haven't said anything really. So no complaints. Yeah, no right. complaints. <laughs> so we're good. That's good. Thank you. Just wanted to hear that. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, I just also want to echo uh, Director Bombright in thanking thank you. you. Um, as one of those parents, 12, over 12 years ago, who said, okay, um, yeah, right? And so for a policy um, committee, uh, here I am 12 years later. So um, uh, careful. Know, just careful what you raise your hand uh, Right. Yeah, I, yeah. It's very interesting to me. That's the thing that caught my eye is because I've never been involved. My first son was during COVID, so oh. he couldn't even go to preschool. And so now I'm getting this with my second son, and it's like, hey, okay, I can have a voice, and I want that for both of my children. And my little guy has another year because of the way his birthday lands. So I'll be here again next year. So. Awesome. And it's like you are also benefiting us right. at this level and the district because you're an, a champion for Head Start and you can help you. people in your own community, in your own immediate community. So I just also want to say thank you so much because we know thank it's you. um, you're volunteering and your time is valuable and we're grateful for your time. So well, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you both. Thank All you right. Much. Thank you guys. <laughs> thank you.
Madam President, I just want to uh, use a, a little bit of time to recognize uh, it is postseason in the uh, TPS Athletics Arena. And so this past weekend, uh, the Lincoln Abes were uh, crowned uh, league champions in wrestling. And uh, wrestling has 14 weight classes. And uh, on the boys' side, uh, TPS uh, students won 10 out of the 14 out of the Pierce County League. So um, very exciting there. Uh, Foss traveled to Ording and had a number of individuals move on uh, in the 2A division. Our 3A girls, Silas, Lincoln, Mount Tahoma, and Stadium uh, traveled. Uh, uh, placed, uh, Lincoln placed third out of 16 teams. And we had six individual champions moving on to the regional tournaments this week. And then our uh, FOSS girls advanced. Um, we had one placer, a third placer at 110 pounds. Tons of wrestling across the state this weekend. So if you're, uh, <laughs> you like sitting in a gym and seeing. Uh, Go wrestling. There's a lot going on in there. But there was so much more. Uh, our girls flag football teams are moving into the playoff rounds. And we have both um, Mount Tahoma and Stadium advancing this year. And we're looking for them to carry on uh, the Abe's tradition of winning it last year. Our boys basketball teams are in the West Central Districts. Mount Tahoma, Stadium, and Lincoln will all be starting this week into that. And our 2A FOSS boys will be also starting in the bracket. On the girls' side, we have Silas and Lincoln, both participating in the West Central District uh, Championships. In girls' bowling, we had several individuals advance to the state tournament um, from Silas and Stadium. Unfortunately, there was no finalist, uh, but a lot of celebration there. And I feel like, oh, did I mention boys' swim? Mm -mm. Oh, yeah, boys' swim. <laughs> Stadium Tigers, third place. Uh, in the West Central District, in the Silas Rams, fourth place. And I believe our stadium cheerleaders took 10th at the state tournament this last weekend. Well, we had our Silas Rams and Stadium Tigers represented at the cheerleading states championship. They did not place, but they did great. So now you're an announcer. Is that going to be in part of your title? <laughs> and, superintendent? Yes, and this evening we have. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And I'll just remind, I don't see our student reps, but this is the season of plays mm -hmm. and musicals. Yes. And so please jump on those websites. I heard there were so many kids at Hunt Middle School in the play that they decided to do two separate casts because they didn't want to turn anyone away. And so lots of great extracurricular activities. So proud of our kids. So thankful for all of our staff and community members that go above and beyond and do the extras whether it's showing up for supervision, whether it's being there, whether it's coaching and mentoring, and, and they play all different roles. And so we're really, truly blessed in that. And, and uh, I think that's, I'll leave it on those high notes. Please root on our TPS folks mm -hmm. this weekend. I'm pretty sure that Mean Girls at Silas is happening starting Friday, and then they also have performances the following weekend. I, I'm pretty sure that Lilia has shared that with yeah, us. She, Lillian has shared Lillian. that with us, so. Yeah. Mm, Stadium is doing uh, In the Heights, a Lin Manuel yeah. Miranda musical, the one he did before uh, Hamilton. So um, they're, they always do a great job at Stadium. So that is, I think, April, mid April. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lots of good stuff. Lots, uh, any one of our schools, any given night. And of course, you know, uh, Bub Club Beyond and Beyond the Bell, just this session, you know, a minor group of kids. I think I looked at their uh, enrollment today and just the third session was over 5,800 students being served wow. in their home schools through community yes. partnerships with families to pay as they choose in a safe place from three to six. So. You stop and pause and you say well, that's what makes Tacoma so special when we all roll up our sleeves and lean in and so just really feeling um, thankful today so go TPS excellent all right uh, we're moving on to item number eight staff report to the board and there is none item number nine members of the public wishing to address the board General Benro, do we have anyone? We do not have any written or verbal public comments. Right? Okay. Well, then I will save all of us from me reading on <laughs> half a page. <laughs> um, for future board meetings, um, there are two ways that um, people can um, contribute to public comment. You can um, send email the board at board at tacoma.k12.wa.us. 
um, and uh, and also, of course, in person. And if you um, are in need of accommodations, um, please um, contact the board office in advance of the meeting for disability accommodations. Um, all right, moving on to item number 10, consent, consent agenda. I move the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. And moving on to item 11, policy matters. 11.1, .1, first reading of revised policy 2190, highly capable services. The general counsel, on behalf of the director of equity, AVID, and advanced programming, recommends the board of directors consider the draft proposal of revised policy 2190 and provide feedback before a second reading. Uh, if you'd like me to tell you a little bit about this one. That'd be great. Thank okay. you. So we have a Senate bill that was passed in May 2023. Uh, this is Senate Bill 5072, if, um, if somebody would like to look it up. And it requires some changes to the way school districts in Washington State do highly capable services. Um, one of the ways uh, that the law requires that we change our work includes a second screening for highly capable students at the classroom level that would occur after that second grade. We typically screen in second grade, and then it requires another one later, so that if there were students that were missed in that first round, they could be captured in that second round and identified and brought into the programming. So if you look at the red lines to, to 2190, uh, and this work was led by Justina Johnson, our director of equity and AVID, um, we took the opportunity to sort of bring it up to date, you can see that it was an older policy, bring it up to date with some other uh, things this board has requested. So we've got the purpose statement in there. Uh, we're updating with language that's more inclusive compared to what that old language was before. And then we're getting that HB 5072 language in there as well. So this is just a first reading, uh, no vote necessary, but if you have any feedback, we'd be happy to take it uh, before I bring it back to you. Okay, are there any questions or comments? Just a comment that this will be going before the Equity Policy Review Team next yes. Thursday. I believe it is next Thursday. I think it is too. And I think also, just because you know I'm going to say it during that meeting anyway, I want to make sure we link in 16, <laughs> Policy 1600 here as a reference point. Thank you. Got it. Excellent. Any other comments or questions? All right. Um, uh, all right. Good. Um, item number 12, financial report. The district's monthly financial report will be presented at the February 22nd business meeting. Uh, monthly financial statements can be found on the district website at www.tacomaschools.org backslash departments backslash business and finance. Um, item number 13, curriculum and instruction, there is none. Item 14, business matters, also none. Uh, item 15, other business, there is none. <laughs> and we rapidly are at uh, item number 16, board comments and reports. Wow. It's Since it's Director Mar McElroy is um, not here to go first, who would like to take this the place? I would go first, but I don't have any report for you this evening. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dr. Leon? Okay, okay. Um, yes, I would just say that um, I am trying to remember, I am so bad with names, but um, I missed last meeting, but the, I, so I didn't get to share that I had gone to uh, Washington uh, Elementary at the invitation of one of the teachers to the fifth grade classroom uh, where it's so so impressive. They have the, like a career day, or they just talk to people about what they do and how they how they got to where they are. And, um, and I don't know, there's like 24, 20 kids, 21. I don't know how many kids in the classroom. They were all attentive. They had amazing questions, and it went on for 45 minutes. And they grilled me. I mean, it was awesome. And um, I just want to shout out to all of our teachers who are doing such great work and modeling bringing opportunities before our kids to meet people from all sorts of careers and uh, uh, perspectives and um, and just wanted to say it was a great day. So um, thanks for that. And uh, just a reminder, tomorrow is JMAC, bright and early. See you there. Vice President Rosa. See you there. I'm looking see forward to there. We'll see the superintendent too because it's the quarterly CEO meeting. Um, and we will be, uh, and I think we'll also see Morris Aldridge there. Um, he's going to talk a little bit about the, the bond, and uh, we're going to do some talk, some conversations about, about uh, summer late night as well. So we'll see you there. Excellent. All right. Um, well, I um, 
feel like it's been a month since the last uh, board business meeting. Um, I was in DC for most of, um, for a week um, with the Washington State School Directors Association um, and I was there in the capacity as the chair of the Federal Network Relations Committee um, and we had, um, uh, we attended the NSBA conference, their equity conference, and then Advocacy Institute. Um, and uh, it was last week. <laughs> we um, met with the um, federal delegation um, from across Washington State. There were 18 of us school directors um, from uh, multiple corners of Washington, and we met with um, Senator both Senator Murray and Senator Cantwell's um, staff to our top um, priorities that we were there to talk about were special education funding through the um, IDEA, um, which is um, continues to be woefully underfunded at the federal level, um, and then uh, Title I funding, um, and there's a lot of intersections there, and so um, those were really successful meetings. I think all in all, there were 13 different federal delegates that um, and staff that were met with um, by all of us. And then um, on um, the 31st, we met with the USDA department. Um, and this is the second time that um, WASDA has met with, um, WASDA um, members have met with the USDA. And some of the advocacy out of the conversation last year led to the, re, um, the lowering of the free and reduced meal threshold for across the country. And we um, actually are one of the first um, school director, um, the USDA, um, folks had generally never met with school directors before. And so um, this was our second annual, our, our meeting with them, second year in a row, and it was a really productive and interesting conversation um, and talked about just food inflation, um, milk shortages and supply, like all kinds of things, but then also some grant programs and um, other opportunities um, that are available through the USDA department. And then we also met with the FCC um, which was a very interesting building in and of itself. Um, but that, uh, when then we ended our day with the Department of Education, um, just again, our um, message from to the Bar Department of Ed was also around SPED, or IDEA, excuse me, and um, Title I funding. Um, and so that was a really productive conversation. Um, and these are folks that are career um, uh, they work in these departments, like these are their career, they're not politicians, they're policy. Um, anyways, they're, they're, some of them have been there this, their whole career in these departments. So, um, and then, so that was really productive. And then yesterday, I know there was other things that happened, but yesterday, um, superintendent and I were down in Olympia to talk with our um, Tacoma delegation around um, um, funding for um, materials and office supplies, and I'm trying not to speak in acronyms, <laughs> but to, can you speak a little bit to, it's MSOC is the acronym, but I know I'm missing one of the words besides materials, supplies, and what am I missing? Look, it all came from the back of the room. That, Thank you. <laughs> and they reminded me I was mispronouncing it all day yesterday. Oh. Yeah, um, we, we talked about special education and, you know, um, last year our special education costs were $5.4 million more than the state provided. Uh, we talked about transportation costs and how our transportation costs were $3.8 million more than the state provided. Uh, we talked about substitute costs. Um, and these are all real costs that we believe are under the basic education uh, umbrella and how those were $5.8 million more than we were allocated in the state. Um, we talked about nutrition costs and these are really important conversations that I'm so thankful that you know that you folks participate in and those were $3.8 million more than we were allocated. Um, and we've been talking about our challenges with the budget for a long time. We've been talking about how the federal dollars will go away, and they have been designed to offset our enrollment decline, but these are in addition to those pieces. We talked about our insurance and utility costs that were $2.7 million more, and so you can quickly add up the significant challenges that we face, and unfortunately, we are not alone in Washington State. 
And so we've talked about some of our mitigating strategies, but um, under President Keating's leadership and all of your leadership and our legislative agenda, we thought it was very important that our federal delegation understand the importance of investing in those things first, not additional add-ons. Um, these are real life things that are going to keep us moving afloat, if you will. Um, and so uh, it was, it was a helpful day, and those are some of the little things that are part of MSOC, and some of them fall outside of MSOC that we are um, we're really concerned about. Um, so I didn't mean to interrupt, but. No, that's perfect. And I would also add um, the school directors that um, I was in DC with, they are also facing all very similar um, shortfall, budget shortfalls and um, increased expenses. So this is, this is a state, wide issue as well um, so um, but it's always good I think to um, get a chance to talk to our um, legislators face to face um, and I know that they really appreciate it because um, they don't like us up here we don't always hear from folks um, and you know we're better able to do our jobs when we're better informed and we're engaged so um, yeah, so that was, and I want to thank uh, Charlie Brown for being basically our guide um, around these meetings yesterday as well. Um, and then the last thing I just um, have thought a lot about um, getting to go to DC the last um, few years um, outside of COVID impacts, um, I've had the opportunity to meet school directors from all across the country and build relationships and connections and we learn from each other. Um, Director Str or Vice President Scherzer and I had a chance to do that last year. Um, and I was um, really struck this year by how many, um, given that it's Black History Month, um, how many um, black school board directors that um, I got to meet and some got to um, continue our connections from last year. Um, and also um, board directors here in our own area. Um, Lakeisha Phillips from Federal Way, and then also Terrence Mayers from the Bethel School District, um, who we um, advocated for. And I just, it, I felt like it was, um, it was really um, meaningful um, for me to get to um, spend time um, with these leaders um, from all around the country, from Kansas City, Missouri, Colorado, multiple places in Georgia, Nevada, or not Nevada, um, Colorado and um, I know I'm from, oh Jersey like I just it, I think the more we learn the more I learn from what people are doing in you know in our roles from across the country um, I just feel stronger and more confident and um, learn so um, I just want to acknowledge um, and also acknowledge our two um, board directors uh, director Vi director McElroy and vice president Strozier um, in honor of Black History Month um, are there any other comments or additions? No? Uh, we did make a, and I'm, maybe I apologize, uh, the shift a little bit next week. So I, oh, yeah. um, we, we decided that we were going to uh, give you a deeper overview of our budget building process at the next board meeting. Um, on the 22nd. So I just want to, folks were looking and saying what happened to the study session. We thought um, between uh, Directors Strozier and Keating is, is that it would be better for us to make sure that we were in that same cadence. And so we will be going over that same topic on the 22nd. And then I would just like to also publicly acknowledge uh, the support that I felt from our Pierce County delegation yesterday. And they took time to really have deep conversations with us and try to understand they have a really tough job, right? Um, all the difficult decisions around housing and environment, I can go healthcare and to balance this. And so uh, it, it was not lost on me how they took time out of their time a day to meet with us to say, so what does this now mean in Tacoma? And what should we be thinking about? So thank you. Excellent. All right, that brings us to item number 17, announcements of next regular board meetings. February 22nd uh, at 6 p.m. there will be a business meeting. March 14th at 6 p.m. will be um, a business meeting. And then on March 21st uh, at 6 p.m. will be a study session. Um, and I guess I'll just say last call for any other additions. All right, y'all. Uh, item number 18, meetings adjourned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.